All right there. Hi, fourth graders. I hope you had a great weekend and are ready for another great week. Thank you so much for all the learning that you're doing online. I really appreciate it. And uh, thanks for just working hard and, and being the great people that you are. So this week we're going to be doing quite a bit with fractions. And uh, it can be a little sticky at times, but it's really not... When there's a few basic things that we know about fractions, then... Um, we can kind of think our way through how we can get to the answer we want. But before I start talking about fractions, I have this really, really great fraction joke that I wanted to share with you. Are you ready for it? All right, so um, what did the evil fraction say uh, to the other fraction? What did the evil fraction say to the other fraction? Do you give up? He laughed and then he said, you will never stop my plans for world denomination. But get it? Like instead of domination, world domination, they said denomination, like denominator, because it's a fraction, and fractions have numerators and denominators. Get it? All right, so let's start with a fraction. I'm just going to pick a fraction, uh, let's say four sevenths. And this fraction is composed of a numerator. And it's composed of a denominator. Now, something super, 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 super important to remember is that fractions are worth less than 1. So if I have a candy bar and I break it up into smaller pieces, I now have fractions of that candy bar. Anytime you are dealing with an amount that is less than one whole, it will be either a fraction, you know, or a decimal, which we talked about as well. But it'll, you know, fraction is one way to write numbers that are less than one. So what this means, this numerator, this four sevenths, means that there are four parts out of seven. So let's show you what that looks like. So today we're going to be dealing a lot with fraction strips. So I've got my strip right there. And I'm going to take it to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces. And I need to shade four parts out of seven. Now, this seven is important because it tells you two things. First, it tells you how many chunks there are in the whole. And relatedly, it also tells you how many pieces there would need to be in order to equal one. So if I had all seven of these shaded in, I would have one whole shaded in. But in this case, I have four parts shaded in. So one, two, three, and four. So that is equal to four parts shaded out of seven. I recommend a lot of students really try to draw circles when they're doing fractions. And we already talked about this when we started fractions. But remember that I really like the fraction strips. They're just, it's so much easier to draw, especially if you're trying to draw sevenths on a circle. It can be really sticky, or sevenths on a square. I just do the long rectangle and then and then cut it up. So let's let's look at a few more of these. Let's say, for instance, I had a number that was this one's gonna be super easy. Let's do two thirds. So to do two thirds, I'd have to remember. Okay, this is a number that is less than one, and there would be two parts shaded out of three. So I draw my one hole right here. And then I'm going to cut it up into three pieces. And the amount I'm going to have shaded there is 2 out of the 3. So that would be 2 thirds. I have a numerator of 2. The numerator always goes up on top. And then I have a denominator of 3. So there's two parts shaded out of 3. Uh, let's try one more. This one I'm going to do a little bit uh, smaller pieces. Now, something to remember is that the bigger the denominator, the smaller the pieces. The bigger the denominator, the smaller the pieces. And that's because you're taking one whole and cutting it up into more pieces. So there's going to be, so each piece has to be smaller in order to equal that whole. Um, that can be kind of mind bending. We talked about that back in class. Um, but more pieces, a bigger denominator does not necessarily mean a bigger number. It actually can mean the opposite. It's the ratio of comparing the two. So let's, let me show you what kind of what I mean. So let's say I want to do 10 twelfths. And again, that 10 is my numerator. 
and then I have twelfths, which is my denominator. So to draw that, and draw a little bit longer of a fraction strip, I'm going to cut it up into 12 equal pieces, or pretty close to equal pieces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And to draw the 10 twelfths, I'm going to have to shade 10 of these. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So I have 10 pieces shaded out of 12, and that's what equals 10 twelfths. Now let's say that I had um, 5 sixths instead. One, two, three, four, five, six. If I had five sixths and I drew in five sixths, notice that the amount shaded is the same size. Ten twelfths is actually equal to five sixths. And, and we'll get into some of this later in the week, but um, the point I'm trying to make here is that the ten twelfths has smaller pieces because there's more of them. But, but in fact, the two fractions are equal. So what I'm trying to say here, the bigger the denominator, the smaller the pieces. The smaller the denominator, the bigger the pieces. That's, you know, that's just how the ratio works. So good luck on your math today. Thank you for all your hard work and keep up the good work. See you later.